cards, dice, the ponies. I've always loved the action. The sweaty palms and the flash of cash as it's tossed into an ever-growing pot in the middle of the table. A pot that could be mine if only Lady Luck would glance in my direction. You know, you never give me nothing. Nothing. I was two months behind in the rent and owed money to everybody I ever met. Had no business being in this game. But there I was. Hoping to ride a sweet hand of poker to the biggest one-night payoff of my life. You went around. You win? Yeah, I win. I only got 500. Maury, can you help me out? You're already on the book for two grand. Come on, Maury. I'm good for it. I'll pay you back eventually. Eventually, better mean Tuesday. You still owe me for the uh, Stanley Cup finals. He's in. What do you got? Full house, Seamus. Aces over kings. But not so fast, Angel. The full house just collapsed. I got a straight flush to the ten. Right, wait a minute. Nobody's going nowhere with my money. Your money? Half of that stash came out of my wallet. Hey, come on, Angel. Don't be a sore loser. Shut up, Eddie. You're the one who brought these books. Let's play together. What's the matter with you, Angel? Are you accusing us of cheating? I ain't accusing. I'm saying. Now listen. Nobody was in on anything. I won that pot fair and square. Now get out of here. This ain't over. I'll be seeing all this. All of you, Angel. With a name like Grammatica, you should use the language with a little more care. Here's a couple of words. I know you'll understand. You're dead, Emma. All he is. Dead. With 30 grand in the pot, at least I wouldn't die broke. My ship had finally sailed in. I just raked in the biggest pot of my life. Too bad my life had been threatened by a low-life thug named Angel Grammatico. If I had a dollar for every time he threatened to kill me after a poker game, I could play in better poker games than this. Why can he lose quietly like the rest of us? What's this? It's my marker. You good for it? Come on, Mike, it's a sure thing. OK. So, Maury, how much do I owe you? 2500 Here, count it. Where's the interest? Interest? I'll tell you what, I am interested in the sixth at Belmont, a horse named Running Gag. Here, put a thousand on it. You're back on the books, Hammer. And for you, sweetheart, that's for some ice cream. How about if I buy you a drink? Oh, I would love that. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Come on, Mike. You gotta give us a chance to get even here. Even? Listen, you're lucky you got a subway token in your pocket. I'm out of here. Look at this pot. Dutch, our sexy croupier, took me back to her place for a little strip poker. 
And in this game, the dealer was wild. I always heard the Dutch men trouble. You're my kind of trouble. Mm. Just call me your Dutch treat. <laughs> Let's play another hand. Shut <laughs> Shoes was getting his clock clean. I was getting cleaned out. My Dutch treat turned out to be a Dutch thief, a high-class grifter who played me to win, place, and roll. It was a long shot that I'd ever get my winnings back, and the odds were about to get a lot worse. Hey, what's going on? Boy, oh boy, am I glad to see you. Played a little poker, did you, buddy? Hey, what do you mean, buddy? Fit him for cuffs. Hey, wait, wait, just wait, just hold on. I'm the guy who was robbed. Well, let's start with B&E, because I got no idea what you're doing here. Then we can move upstairs to Vice, where your name comes up as the General Motors of gambling. All right. Then we'll take a little walk down the hallway to Homicide. Homicide? What are you talking about? We found Eddie No Shoes, beaten to death. Eddie's dead? Yeah. You got an alibi? As a matter of fact, I got a couple. First of all, I got Eddie's marker. Now, you tell me. Why would I kill a guy if he owes me money? And then there's Dutch. Where's she? Amsterdam. I don't know. She split with my poke. Well, you can tell it to the judge. Listen, you want to find out who killed Eddie No Shoes, you dig out Angel Grammatico. Spoke to him this morning. Had some very incriminating things to say about you, my friend. Well, consider the source, pal. Sworn testimony, willing to take a polygraph. He would give a polygraph machine a nervous breakdown. And you would give me an ulcer. But before the end of my first term as DA, I will rid this city of the illegal evil that is gambling. Not before the city gets rid of you, pal. I'm issuing an scorched earth policy, and you are already a bug on the windshield of this very popular movement. I have you by the short hairs. The only thing short around here is you, Barry. You're short of license? Pulled it this morning, working on your gun permit this afternoon. The system really works. Look, if this is a homicide beep, where the hell is Gleason? Ah, Gleason. That's the best part. Suspended? Why don't you badge in your gun, Gleason? Oh, come on, Barry. Don't bury me. You buried yourself with that last bet. You can't do this. I mean, you cannot do this now. My kid just graduated from the academy. Well, maybe you should have thought of that before you got in bed with that lowlife, Maury. Oh, come on, man. It was a harmless little bet. I mean, it... everybody does this. You knew that I had an anti-gambling campaign focused on this precinct. You gotta help me out here. I can't do that. I need your badge and your gun. Now. Now get some help. Even the best homicide cop can have a vice. And Skip Gleason and I were about to be squeezed in one. The DA's scorched earth policy was meant to take no prisoners, except one, a bookie named Maury. I never got his last name. Unfortunately for Skip and I, he had our names. Thanks a lot, Maury. You know, I never would have taken you for a snitch. It wasn't me, Skip. They got my book. Now, how the hell did that happen? Angel Gramatico dropped the dime on me. How far does that book go back? Back to Cassius Clay. You and Hammer are all over it. Why the hell did you write it down? Why didn't you use phony names? I thought Skip and Hammer were phony names. You shut up. And you out. It's OK, Lieutenant. 
Can I get an Egg McMuffin? Eddie No Shoes was one of those Runyon-esque characters New York is famous for. His friends called him colorful, which is a polite way of saying shifty. But I knew Eddie, and he never hurt anyone but himself. The only thing colorful about Eddie now were the bruises that told the tale of his painful death. Guy's got more bills than you. It's those damn credit cards. Check this out. Pass due on boarding. It's for a horse. Yeah. Something? Just soft contact lens. Does Eddie wear contacts? I don't think so. Is that blue? Very. Old blue eyes is back. With 30 grand of poker winnings missing, I had plenty of incentive to track down Eddie's killer. But I had another motive. I like this schmo. I traced his unpaid stable bill to a horse ranch in Peekskill, an hour north of Yonkers. Old Eddie was always full of surprises, but he had one more card up his sleeve. The guy who never had a quarter for the newspaper had enough change to own a racehorse. Don't move! I'll blow your head off. Just take it easy. Get around easy. Take it easy. I'm a friend of Eddie No Shoes. That son of a bitch owes me six months of stable fees. I was holding his horse on her account. Came in here and he stole it last night. The horse is gone? The horse? And that nut trainer Eddie hired? What's the trainer's name? Lucius. Don't know his last name. Well, if, uh, if you remember it, you... Uh, hey! Watch it. You call me. It's just my car. You see that bomb no shoes? You tell him I'll see him in court. Well, I'm not planning on seeing him anytime soon, but if I do, I'll tell him. Yeah, you get out of here. There's nothing like a shotgun in the back to send you on your merry way. If I had any shot of finding Eddie's killer, I'd need help. So I called on Skip Gleason, who was having a few shots of his own. Hey, Grady, you hear about the wife who split her husband's skull with a half-round wood raft because he lost his job? Don't worry, Maggie will forgive you. If we're getting one thing, I'm guilty. Bring me a double. Make that a double espresso, Grady. We got a burger to solve. Somebody finally killed Lawrence? Oh, I'll drink to that. Skip, don't you think you've had enough? Listen, did you know that Eddie No Shoes had a racehorse? A racehorse? I didn't know Eddie owned pants. He hasn't been able to pay his stable fees for the past six months. Last night, the racehorse got snatched. My guess, Angel. Well, you got the wrong guy, Mike. Uh, my badge is lifted, remember? Dad. Judgy! Grady! Who's for my baby? I can't. I'm on duty. Hey, Jackie, you look great in that uniform. Thanks, Mike. You look great in that hat. I heard about what happened. I'm sorry. Mm, yeah, me too. How's your mother taking? Not good. She burst into tears and ran out and bought some more tile grout. Oh, boy. Better tire grout than a divorce lawyer. How you doing? Me? Fit as a fiddle. You keep drinking that way, your liver's gonna need a string section. Jackie, you know, um, I know it's gonna cause you a little flack on the job. I promise you, I promise you that I'm gonna make it up to you and your mother. Come on, Dad. You're the reason I became a cop. Is this a hell of a kid or what, Mike? Seriously, Dad, what are you gonna do? He's gonna nail the guy that killed Eddie No Shoes. How's Captain No Badge gonna do that? With my help. Look, I gotta run. Don't worry about Mom. I'll take care of her. See you, Mike. See you, Jackie. Well, you should be very proud of him. He's a good kid. The best. Grady, two more are here. Skip. Why? You want some? After dragging Skip out of Lou's, he dragged me into three more saloons on the way to my place to sleep it off. It's sunshine! It's sunshine! Ah, Amherst, shut up, Dad! 
fucking horse. I was joking with you, Conway. You're the best. Hey, you shut up in there! What's that smell? Could be the chicken wings. What the hell? Oh. The window open. What I didn't know was I already had a full house. <laughs> Just what I always wanted. A stable home. Skip might have been drunk, but it wasn't I pink elephants that were the problem. Seeing a leprechaun with a horse. Who the hell are you? I'm Lucius, and this is Laurel Canyon. Are you real, Doughboy? Yes, I'm, I'm real. <laughs> Mike, whatever you do, don't light a match. This guy's got enough alcohol in him to blow up the Grand Canyon. Sit down. No, no, no. I'm going to sit down. How did you get in here? Well, I just gave a big tip to the doorman. What are you doing here? Well, actually, I'm, I'm Eddie's marker. No, 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 I'm not his marker. Laurel Canyon is really the marker. Wherever Laurel Canyon goes, I go, too. Well, you keep hey, it whoa. Down. Hey. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. Will you please tell that nag to quit wrecking my joint? Mike, look, I told you the name of the horse is Laurel Canyon. I don't care if her name is Secretariat. This is not a barnyard. Now, will you please just get the hell out of here? Now, wait a minute. Eddie told me if, I, if anything ever happened to him, that the nicest guy in the world, you, you would take care of us. Well, somebody took care of Eddie. What do you mean? Eddie's dead, Lucius. Dead? Eddie dead? He always told me that somebody was after him. Poor guy. I guess they got him. Did he give you a name? Eddie didn't give names. The gang he ran with, with they had no ideas on anybody. Poor Eddie. How did Eddie get a hold of the horse? Oh, bought him at Keeneland Sales down in Kentucky. And don't make any mistakes. This, this, this horse here is a real runner. He's a champion. Yeah. Well, your champion just crapped in my ashtray. Oh, I'm sorry. Girl, watch what you're doing. There. Look. Would like to run this horse in the Golden Cup. It's only a few weeks away. Eddie and I, I mean, when he bought the horse, we always had a dream of maybe winning the big one. All right, Lucius, I'll tell you what. I'll let you stay here, but just for tonight. Oh. One night. Oh. Laurel can't thank you enough. Oh. Well, not now, Maggie. We'll wake the kids. Hey, Maya. Hi, Mike. Keeping the hall green, huh? <laughs> I try. Yeah. Smell. What? Mm, smells so nice. No, no. Change your cologne. No, no. I don't wear cologne. You know what? Ah, oh. It's a horse. A oh, horse? Yeah. I love horses. Really? Remind me of my childhood, you know? Uh -huh. When I used to was very little girl, I sleep next to the horses in the green, oh, green yeah. grass. Reminds me of the Kentucky Derby. You betting again? Well, from time to time. What is the horse name? Laurel Canyon. Give me a favor. Hmm? Put 20 to win for Laura Canyon next Sunday. You got it. <laughs> Namaste. Word on the street placed Angel Grammatico at Saratoga Racetrack. So after filling Skip with a bromo, we made tracks of our own to upstate New York. It was way past post time in our race to catch a killer. And Angel was still the pants down favorite. I'm busy. Yeah, so am I, Grammatico. Is that you, Gleason? You're nothing but a dirty cop who got busted. Oh. Well, keep talking, Angel. And a plumber's gonna have to snake you out of that bowl. What do you want? Who killed Eddie? Ask Hammer. He fixed the game, won the table, and he couldn't pay. Hammer wouldn't take his marker. Roughed Eddie up. Yeah? What were you doing? Nothing. Hammer was waving his gun around. 
Where'd you put your gun, Angel? At the cleaners? Is that you, Hammer? In the flush, pal. Come on, who you kidding? You couldn't sell that story to the Weekly Reader. I got news here, Seamus. Already sold it to the district attorney, Lawrence. He offered immunity. That's politics, Angel. We play a different game in this room. It's called squeeze the sleaze. Yeah? Well, why don't you take a walk so I can squeeze in private? You don't start answering some questions, pal. We're going to squeeze your privates. You hear that, Gleason? That's your career. <laughs> ah. <Ow. laughs> I think you broke my nose. What a shame. What can you tell me about Dutch? I don't know what you're talking about. Really? What can you tell me about a horse named Pop Top in the third? Are you crazy? That's worth money. Yeah? Then you better start talking, pal. Dutch! What's her real name? Dutch Bowler. I told you, Dutch Bowler! That's her real name. Who's she in bed with? She used to be in bed with me. She drove me crazy. I got her own place. 71st Street? Yeah. Where'd you meet her? Blackjack game. Oh. Atlantic City. Hey! That's it! In Atlantic City! You guys are as sharp as marbles. What'd you do that for? I just did you a favor, pal. I know this horse, Franklin's Follies. He should be pulling a carriage in Central Park. Thanks for the tip. I got a tip for you, Grammatico. Keep your nose clean. Otherwise, the next photo finish you'll see will be a mugshot. You're going to hear from my lawyer. While Skip went home to patch up his marriage, I dropped by Dutch's place on 71st Street to see if I could patch together the pieces of this puzzle. One sure bet. There was no love loss between Angel and Dutch. And Dutch was coming up fast as the dark horse suspect. Her time in Atlantic City taught her how to cook a deck of cards. And she rolled my bones to the tune of 30 grand. I couldn't rule out murder as one of her games. She also had an eye for the horses. But with the Golden Cup race coming up, something might be going down. <laughs> Little did I know it would be me. Dutch Boulder used to deal blackjack in Atlantic City, but now she dealt a blackjack to the back of my skull. At least this time, she didn't stick around long enough to empty my wallet. Right about now, I could have used a doctor, but I settled for the nurse across the hall. Oh, good. I heard a crash and came running right over. Oh, I'm sorry I missed that. Honey, you look very pale. Uh, why don't you come back to my place and no uh, Put some ice on your head. That won't stop the swelling. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. oh, um, sweetheart, if you ever want to play doctor, just give me a call. I'll make a note. <laughs> a gambler always thinks next time it'll be different. Next time I'll win. But if Skip and I couldn't solve Eddie's murder, there would be no next time for us. So we rented a trailer and hitched it to my gas guzzler and hit the open road to Saratoga, New York, home of the Golden Cup race. We were playing a hunch, a long shot, but sometimes you have to go with your gut. And my guts told me the killer would be in the grandstands come race day. You guys wait here. Where are you going? You have to see a man about a horse. Hey, 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 are you sure? Are you sure we're not late? What? Let me ask you something. Do you know anybody here? No, I don't know anybody here. Well, Lucius and I were about to bluff our way into one of the biggest races of the year. Between us, we didn't have enough scratch to gas up the car for the trip home. What? What is Excuse me, uh, we'd like to enter a horse in the Golden Cup. Yes, sir. Come on in, gents. Oh, and I, uh, first of all, 
like to present you the uh, the bloodlines of the horse. Laurel Canyon. Mm. No breeding. You have to understand, this is a very important race. Oh, we realize that, sir. Well, I'm only trying to save you a little money. Well, we'll worry about the money. We want to enter this horse in this race. I'll need to see his registration. His registration? His registration. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Come on, again, again. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> That's 44 beers you owe me. Right, double enough, double enough. All right. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, my God. Would you two just shut up? I can't take it. Paper, scissors, who cares? Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Come on, let's go in. Rock, paper, scissors. Everything's in order. Entry fee is 30,000. 30 what? Want to make out a check right now? 30,000. You got any money? Well, I've got 10%. I hate parting with this, but... Well, well here's 10% of the 30,000, Mr. Secretary. We'll have the rest early in the morning for you. Lucius, where are you going to get it? I don't know. Meanwhile, Velda decided to take to her heels to escape Skip's casino on wheels, only to run into a guy who was very well healed, Lord Gaffney. Didn't we meet some friends? I thought I shut that place down. Pardon me? I'm sorry, Yo. You must have me confused with someone else. Impossible. I'm Lord Gaffney. I'm single. Velda. Charming. Do me the honor of dining with me tonight. Oh, I don't know. I have to think about it. Okay. Good. My car will pick you up at seven. He likes carrots. Did you see how good looking he is? Now all we need is a stall. A stall? Good luck. They're all taken. But, uh, Mr. Secretary, we don't want an apartment with the, with the television. Just a stall. Please. Come on, now. I, 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 we've come a long way to enter this, this horse in this race. I mean, we've got everything riding on it. Uh, you gotta help us. I'll tell you what I can do. I got a barn about two blocks away. I'll set you up there. Oh. But first things first, you gotta get a qualifying time. You'll get a qualifying time. Right now. Thanks a lot. No Shoes was one lucky stiff. Laurel Canyon was everything he had ever dreamed of. Everything Lucius said he was, a winner. Right on the money! A black stallion that ran like greased lightning. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching! Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, baby, you did fight. 34 and 1. Get him back, get him back to the barn and cool him out. Cool him out! Take good care of that, baby! I told you, he's loaded with speed. He owe me 440 beers. Oh, but I bet you can't drink him in three weeks. It sounds like you're making progress. I'm already suspended. Now, how'd you do? Huh. Oh, oh, how'd you do? Three eights and 34 and 1. How does that compare to Friends of Bill? He smashed that to pieces. <laughs> Listen, this horse is a speedster, Mike. You can bet the kit and caboodle on this horse. Well, I'll bet the kit, but I left the caboodle in the pawn shop.
While Lucius cooled Laurel Canyon down, I ran into a cool customer, Lord Gaffney, the limey lawn jockey. I beg your pardon. May I help you? You're, uh, you're Lord Gaffney, right? But I believe I've had the pleasure. My name is Mike Hammer. I'm a private investigator. I also happen to have a horse in the race. Ah, the competition. <laughs> Must be the hat. Yes, must be. Uh, do you happen to know a Dutch bowler? Dutch bowler? I know a Greek polo player. Oh, how droll. No, Dutch bowler, pal. B-O-L-L-E-R, do you know her? Hmm, charming girl. Have you seen her lately? Not in the last month or so. I saw a picture of you in Dutch with your horse friends of Bill in the winter circle at the Preakness. Well, that doesn't surprise me. There were many pictures taken that day. What's your interest in Dutch? I love her tulips. Listen, if you happen to run into her again, would you be a good chap and ask her to ring me up? By all means. Yeah, that's a good chap. Listen, good luck in the race. Thank you. But with friends of Bill, luck is axiomatic. Uh -huh. Love the boots. I have a habit of saying, I'll make a note. But I was about to receive a note. Mr. Hammer, someone left this for you at the racing office. Oh, thank you very much. What have we got here? Mike, stop running my name all over town or you'll get me killed. Come to my place and I'll give you what you want. Dutch. Let me see that. Nick, you and Lucius take care of the steed. Come on, Skip, road trip. Wait a second, I had to sleep in the barn? You better not be sleeping. You keep your eyes open. Hey, don't look at me. I've got a date with Lord Gaffney. The guy who owns Friends of Bill? The one and only. Order the lobster. Wait a minute. Belda, men that don't buy the cow get the milk free. Milk's not on the menu. Tonight it's champagne. Well, with champagne, luck is axiomatic. You watch yourself. Come on, sir. Uh, Belda, come with me. I'll explain the relationship between men and women. <laughs> Skip and I made the long drive back into the city, fighting traffic and a gypsy cab driver that didn't believe in turn signals. But if Dutch wanted to talk, I wanted to listen. I don't know if anybody's here. I smell setup. Mike, look at this. You got that note? Yeah. Yeah, the signatures are different. You're right. This could be a setup. Road trip, Mike. This case was in the home stretch. But Belda and Lord Gaffney were neck and necky. This has been really lovely. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Shall I take you home? No. You want to take me? My home. Okay. While Velda was horsing around with Lord Gaffney, Skip and I pulled on the horsepower and raced back to Saratoga. Dutch's note was a fraud, written by an unstable person who wanted to put us out to pasture. Barn doors are open. Nick! Lucius! Mark! This might have been somebody's idea of a joke, but Lucius and Nick didn't think the gag was funny. Laurel Canyon was missing, and now Skip was fit to be tired. Okay, what the hell happened? Two guys is from behind. Well, not only that, I'll tell you, Mike. They stole Laurel Canyon. Now you've got to help us. All right, just calm. You got to. Lucius, calm down. What did they look like? 
I don't know what they look like. Nick, I was seeing stars. Good morning, boys. What's up? Dinner run late? Somebody stole Laurel. Oh, my yeah. God. We're, we're wasting time here. We got to see a man called Horace. I didn't want to shoot the messenger, but I wanted to question him. The racing secretary, Horace, delivered the bogus note from Dutch. Maybe he knew who wrote it. Looks like someone doubted Horace's eye. I'm getting awful tired of seeing these. Let me call Jackie, see if he dug up anything on Angel. Good. Officer Gleason. No, Jack. Officer Gleason. Jackie. Dad. Listen, did you get the dope on Angel? Yeah, I followed him to his cousin's place in Tribeca. The address is 311 Pearl Street. Great, Jack. I owe you one. Hey, listen, Dad. Can I borrow the car keys on Saturday night? Jackie wasn't the only one hung up. With Horace dead and Laurel Canyon missing, we were heading home with our tails between our legs. Looks like you had a better night than we did. Yeah, he was really great. And when he took those blue contacts out, he had the most beautiful brown eyes I've ever seen. But every gambler knows, one lucky roll of the dice can turn your luck around. Now it was time to play pin the murder on the donkey. It's a pretty expensive pin cushion, Gaffney. Hello, Hammer. I was just taking your friend out for a little spin. So I see. It's too bad that you lost something in Eddie's place, something that I happened to find, something to make your brown eyes blue. I'm afraid you've lost me. You knew that Eddie had a fast horse in Laurel Canyon? No, he was no friend of Bill's, but he was fast. Fast enough that he just might win the Golden Cup. So when you tried to buy Laurel Canyon from Eddie, he refused, you snapped, and you killed him. Utter rubbish. Yeah? And then you sent a phony note through Horace to me to send me on a wild Dutch chase. While I was off looking for Dutch, you sent your blokes to snatch Laurel Canyon. And then you killed Horace, because Horace knew too much. He was a loose end you had to tie up. You're a man of culture. You know that the pen is mightier than the sword. No. You won't be winning the Golden Cup this year, pal. You'll have to settle for prison tin. Only soft laurel's hoofs. Mike's okay? I just got the brass ring. Here, Skip. You got the ovens. Lord Gaffney, I'm placing you under citizen's arrest. And when I get my badge back, I'm placing you under arrest arrest. Skip and I had caught a killer, caught a break from Barry Lawrence. I got my license back and skip his badge if we went to Gamblers Anonymous. But it was race day and Laurel Canyon was running while we were rooting. Go, horsey. Let him out, let him out. Let him out now. There he goes. There he goes. Come on. Snowblower she wanted. <laughs> I get my office back. I get my back pay. Hey, I can get a raise. What? 
Even when I win, I lose. <laughs> Mike, look. Uh oh. I better get a hold of Luge's Prado. Forget about it. We gotta get our butts out of here. What? Oh, that's right. Let's go. What do you want? I'm buying. Oh, damn. Well, I just about lost everything. My office, my apartment, my savings, my, my license, and I still kept gambling. My family threw me out. I totally humiliated my son, but I kept gambling. And gambling and gambling. And it was a very close call. We were behind. I mean, our horse fell back at the start. But then it began to rally. When it hit the post, it began to fly and move. I mean, we beat Friends of Bill by two lengths. And we won. We won the Golden Cup. We cleaned up. What's the horse's name? Uh, Laurel Canyon. Belmont, next week. Scotty, yeah. Laurel Canyon, Belmont, next week. Bruce, that the works. Get this. Laurel Canyon to win. Everything. This one's in there. All right. Listen to this. Let's get this. Laurel Canyon, Canyon. 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 Belmont, next week. All right, let's go. I don't care. Mike, I'm for it. You feel rehabilitated yet? No, but I do feel lucky. <laughs>